We are rolling right along with the college football season already week eight, if you can believe it. Auburn looking to get back on track after now losing three straight games. The Tigers fall in Baton Rouge to a very talented LSU team. Uh, Cole and I will recap that loss and then, of course, look ahead to the big one back at Jordan-Hare Stadium on Saturday as Auburn welcomes in Ole Miss. Let's go head to head. All right, guys, here we go. I want to quickly thank our sponsor, the Alabama Cattlemen's Association, Cole Kublik, joining us to break things down. Cole, I think last weekend was probably one that Tiger fans want to soon forget. I'm sure they're looking to turn the page, but we've got to talk about what things were like. I feel like they played out exactly how you kind of predicted it last week when we talked about how this could look in Baton Rouge, a very dominant performance by LSU. Yeah, but there were some things that were there. Uh, you heard Coach Freeze after the game talk about uh, certain drives that could have cut it to a one-score game. And even he said, I'm not saying that means we win the game, but sure. you could have made how that game was being played out a little bit different. And it's just – it's executing. And uh, I think there are a lot of things that – I mean, Jeremiah Cobb did some nice things running the football. Uh, Peyton Thorne actually got the ball out a little bit faster early in the game, kind of had a couple RPOs going early in the game. Mm -hmm. It's just consistency and, and guys helping one another out, receivers helping the quarterback, offensive line helping the running backs and the quarterbacks. It's just it, it all it seems to be very few guys that are going out of their way to make plays and, and the effort's fine. It's there. It's just they're not getting the plays made when they need to. There's a lack of explosive capabilities on offense and then a, an inconsistency in executing the offense the way it needs to be. And that can be breaking off a routed wide receiver, missing a block on the offensive line, cutting a ball inside too early for a running back. Hmm. It's just a lot of things need to be cleaned up, and it's too late in the season to be saying those kind of things. Yeah. Well, let's jump right into the quarterback conversation, Cole, because this is something obviously we've talked about every single week now. Robbie Ashford, Peyton Thorne, they've shared snaps, they've shared time, and at moments they've shared impressive plays uh, impressive opportunities and then there are times where you're, you're very frustrated you're like okay what what is the execution like what you know is the offensive line is it the receivers is it the timing uh what is the answer because i know that right now he freeze said on monday press conference we're looking for answers we will continue to try every personnel package we possibly can to find something that works in your opinion what is the answer moving forward I don't know if there's just one, but uh, but I do think more Robbie Ashford can help. He, he you like I said before, you're you're struggling to create explosive plays, mm -hmm. and you, you've got to find a way. I think 39 yards was the longest play from scrimmage last week. You've got to find a way to either get the ball down the field or move the chains more often. Or explosive plays lead to touchdowns and yeah. put you in scoring position. So Auburn's very limited with how they've been able to find those. And I think now you start to really balance it out, Simone, of, okay, we may get a little bit more consistency in the passing game, especially from the intermediate stuff with Peyton Thorne, but we get the dynamic run threat with Robbie Ashford. Like, which gives us the biggest payoff? Sure. Uh, which risk is, gives us the most potential reward? And there hasn't been a lot of reward with Peyton Thorne in the game, just being honest with you. Now, I'll say this. Like I said, there's not one answer because it's not just quarterback. Yeah. Uh, this Auburn receiving core has 363 yards after the catch this year. To put that in perspective, it's 127th in college football. Wow. And Georgia leads the SEC with over 1,300 yards after the catch. That's a 1,000 yards wow. difference between first and last in the Southeastern Conference. Again, it's not just the receivers. It's – it's the totality of the offense helping one another yeah. and everybody executing and then guys finding ways to do extra things to be able to help you create explosive plays, points, first downs, flip the field, and just yards in general. So if, if they feel like Robbie Ashford, the risk of maybe not being as consistent in the passing game, is, that reward is worth it with what he gives you as a dynamic runner. But I would not be surprised to see more Robbie Ashford. He had a, he had a really nice throw down the seam against LSU. So – I, I'll be interested to see which direction Hugh Freeze wants to go because I know he's frustrated mm -hmm. and I know he wants to try to cr create some of these plays that we're talking about. Based on what you just said, I, I have a question. Is this a, a personnel like Hugh Freeze is dealing with what he has had a hand he was dealt, so to speak? He's trying to fit maybe square peg in a round hole, kind of bringing in his scheme. Is it, hey, this is all new stuff? I mean, what What is the, uh, not maybe not the reason, but some, part of the reason behind some of the issues that you're seeing when it comes to numbers, uh, points on the board, and just total execution? Well, some of it is obviously that it's still a little bit new. 
Um, I, you know, we changed systems going into my junior year. I don't, I don't really think I felt comfortable with it until about midway through almost completely through the next spring practice. Okay. So that was a, that was a spring practice, uh, a fall practice and a season. And yeah. then getting into that next spring kind of is when it really started to make sense okay. and get super comfortable with it. So, and there's different offenses, different ways. It's like he has the whole offense in. I mean, there's a lot sure. of stuff that, you know, he's got that he would like to have in that they're just not going to run right now because they're not ready for it. Some of it is not having enough personnel to be able to run what you want to run. For example, I, I think tempo could help this team a lot, mm -hmm. but they don't have the numbers to really go out there and just run a lot of tempo. You're you're just limited on the offensive line, on the defensive line. You've already had a couple guys in your secondary banged yeah. up, and you don't want to further that with a couple winnable games down the stretch. So once again, this is Hugh Freeze being a good head coach and not just being the coach that he would rather be mm -hmm. because he'd love to go out there and go a little bit faster, give his team some advantages in different ways. But he realizes, man, if I lose two D linemen or if I lose two offensive linemen or two more guys in the secondary or a receiver, we're really going to be in trouble. And we're not going to have a chance to win some of these games down the stretch that we actually might have the opportunity to do if we play good football. Looking ahead to this Ole Miss game, uh, no rest for this Auburn defense as uh, the Rebels put up more than 40 points per game, uh, one of the top in the SEC. Of course, we know what Lane Kiffin is capable of. When you look at the challenge that the defense has, uh, LSU, you got, you got to tip their cap. I mean, like you said, going into that game, they're just full of dudes all over the field at every single position. Um, I feel like Ole Miss, although maybe not as elite, also has a lot of guys who know Lane Kiffin's system. They go fast. And and they're high-powered offense. Well, they they challenge you in a lot of different ways, and it starts with going fast. So those lower numbers will be impacted in this game. Mm -hmm. And I think once again, you'll probably see Hugh Freeze and that offensive staff try to slow things down and try to try to shorten this game and cut those possessions in half or close to in half of what Ole Miss is used to getting. You have some things on film from what Arkansas just did mm -hmm. that were a little bit successful in slowing this offense down. Do you have the same personnel? Probably not. Uh, maybe not across the board at linebacker along the defensive line, and they play a little bit of a different structure. So does Ron Roberts want to change up the front a little bit and how he plays it? You manage that tempo first, and then I still think the emphasis and focus has to be on Quinshawn Judkins and Ulysses Bentley, who's been magnificent when he's come in yeah. to rush the football for Ole Miss. The offensive line is not what it was a year ago, but I think you still have to place the emphasis on taking that run away and the thing with the Ole Miss offense, Simone, is almost every week you can be guaranteed to go put the film on and you're going to see three or four different plays, different personnel groupings, or different formations that you have not seen all year. When I had them two weeks ago, they ran this little power sweep that LSU used to run under Les Miles, but they ran it with the tight end coming flat across and a jet motion coming across. And I asked Lane about it. I said, I hadn't seen that all year. And he said, no, we stole it from the Dolphins when they put 70 up two weeks ago. Wow. So it was the first time they had run it. So you're going to, with a bye week especially, you're going to yeah. get a couple of those plays. You have to ID those quickly mm -hmm. because they're plays that gave LSU problems that entire game. And obviously they weren't able to figure it out until it was too late. So ID those, slow the rushing attack down. And then if you can get to Jackson Dart, I think it'd be great, but it's also difficult because he's a run threat. He can leave the pocket and break you down that way, similar to what Jane Daniels just did. So they're a tough offense to defend. you got to pick your poison. And I think if you can limit their possessions, because Lane also admitted to us, he doesn't like coaching in a game that's slowed down. He would much rather have a track meet, back and forth trading touchdowns. Yep. Auburn's not built that way offensively. And maybe you can frustrate the head coach and the play callers a little bit if you can get them in your style game. Well, when it comes to coaching, we know that there are going to be uh, some personal implications, uh, personal connections, I should say, uh, in this matchup as Hugh Freeze goes against, of course, the program where he coached uh, for nearly five years back in the day. Coach said this is not the first time that they've played yeah. uh, Ole Miss. So he's played Ole Miss since leaving the program. Obviously, they played while at Liberty. So that kind of takes the edge off a little bit. But this is an SEC matchup. Uh, it's going to mean a lot to a lot of people, especially to him. It's at home. It's a night game. Kind of just has all, all of the factors for um, maybe just a little bit of an emotional uh, impact on coach, maybe on the other side. We know Lane Kiffin often responds to emotions for, for matchups like this. Uh, what are your thoughts overall on, on how that could play a role in this game? Well, I do think you'll probably, I mean, I think you'll empty the tank. And I mean, I think the cupboards will be pulled dry. Like everything that's up there resting on the shelf that you've yeah. thought about is probably going to make an appearance. And there's a few things that he's been saving up. 
I just think that's human emotion. Like sure. that's just that's just being a human being. You, there's certain things that we want more in life, and that we just subconsciously put a little bit more into in life. It's not that he doesn't prepare, you know, well or in depth for other games. It's just there's certain things that you said, you know, this is where I'm going to use that one. Yeah. Uh, but I also think having done it before when he was at Liberty makes a big difference yeah. um, because that does remove some of the emotions and some of the desire and some of the wishes that you have of wanting to do to somebody that you, you know, formerly worked for. Sure. But I, I don't inherently, I don't think you can get away from it. And I think him, his clarity with that shows a lot of maturity and a lot of growth in that, Hey, I'm not just going to go out and be reckless or be relentless for no reason, sure. because this is the place that I used to work. So I do think you'll see a little extra, a little bit more, but I don't think it's going to be some totally different game plan or anything like that. It's so one thing about Hugh Freeze that's impressed me uh, going into this season. I feel like he's very thoughtful in his press conferences. I feel like he's yeah. very uh, he's done a lot of, I don't know, maybe self-reflection, looking in the mirror, and I think it's kind of played out in his coaching, maybe how he's handling this team or frustrating times. I, I feel like it's a benefit for the program either way. No, I agree. He, he's been very transparent. He's been very clear uh, with things that maybe normally he wouldn't talk about or wouldn't share. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I, I thought maybe a little bit too open with certain responses, not in a bad way, but it's just surprising that, yeah. wow, he really said that, or he really gave that information mm -hmm. or very, very honest with his assessment on things. And I think fans appreciate that. I, I think fans will look back on that and say, he's not trying to hide anything from us about yeah. where the program is or where certain players are. Yeah, I think that's uh, different than what Auburn fans are used to over the last several years, honestly. Uh, so getting a little bit of transparency from the coach is definitely a big benefit. Before we get to our predictions, uh, Cole, what does this weekend look like for you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm in El Paso Wednesday night for uh, New Mexico State at UTEP. And then okay. I will be in Baton Rouge on Saturday for Army at LSU, 6.30 p.m. on the SEC Network. So a uh, fun-filled week of football for me. Looking forward to it. Going to be busy, of course, uh, Cole on ESPN, the SEC Network, of course, WJOX every single day in his podcast, The Cube Show. Uh, uh, where can uh, people listen to, it, to your podcast, Cole? Uh, at Cube Show 61 on YouTube. Uh, go subscribe there. And then uh, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get yours, Spotify, just search Cube Show and you'll be able to find it there. All right, good stuff. Uh, let's get to uh, our predictions really quick before we let you go. Ole Miss, Auburn, it's a 6 o'clock kickoff at Jordan-Hare Stadium. How do you feel like this one will play out? I just think it's a bad matchup, really, for Auburn because uh, I think from a secondary perspective, they can find a way to negate a few things. But when you see what LSU was able to do to get one-on-ones and to get a lot of grass to throw into that was clean and clear, I think I think Lane Kiffin and Charlie Weiss Jr. will be able to do a lot of the same things. Yeah, the same a similar challenge, not the same, similar challenge with the quarterback's ability to run the football by design and leading the pocket. I think tempo is something that will stress this Auburn defense a little bit. Um, I do think they can find a way to shorten the game. This is an overly aggressive Ole Miss defense at times. Uh, some of the window dressing, the eye violations, you can force that and get them out of position. So I think Auburn can find some things in the run game. I'm just very interested to see where they go with quarterback because I think that may change my opinion depending on where they go or how they go with it. Uh, but I think if you if you shorten it and you were to give Ole Miss, let's say, seven, eight possessions instead of the normal 10, 12 that they would get, I, I still think you're looking at Ole Miss scoring 24, 28 points. Yeah. And I just don't know if Auburn's going to be able to get there. So I'm going to go 28-17. Ole Miss finds a way to get the win at Jordan-Hare Stadium. I do think home field advantage helps Auburn a lot. Yeah, I have 35-17, uh, just because I feel like it's been rough. I think there's a lot of questions with the quarterback situation, like you, like you mentioned, and there just wasn't a lot of promise shown against that LSU offense, and I think that Ole Miss will present a lot of the similar issues um, on Saturday. But we'll see. Uh, you never know, and, and like you said, there's a lot of emotion in this game, and uh, Hugh Freeze probably has a couple tricks up his sleeve for his former team. A 6 o'clock kickoff at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Uh, Cole, I appreciate it. I'll see you next week as we roll on to uh, week nine of the season uh, next week. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Head to Head. For Cole Kublik, I'm Simone Eli. We'll see you later. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.